What is up guys, J1 Pack here and today I really wanted to focus on a very very specific subject and two fighters who really went down the same path as far as mistakes made are concerned. Um, there are two fighters who used to be considered as two of the greatest of all time, two of the best pound for pound fighters in the world and with their own mistakes they really got out of that conversation. Um, so without further ado, Let's get right into it. Those fighters that I'm referring to are Anderson Silva and John Jones. I really wanted to focus on them because especially with what happened to Anderson Silva recently, I think it's worth covering it and kind of analyzing and comparing the mistakes that they made and where it went all wrong for, for those fighters. So let's get right into it. Before we really analyze or compare anything, I like to start with the timeline of their careers and kind of look at where things started to go wrong. Let's start with John Jones. John Jones uh, really all started to go wrong for him at UFC 187. He was post fight Anthony Johnson for the light heavyweight uh, title. Anthony Johnson is considered to be one of the most dangerous fighters on the planet. John Jones then gets into a hit and run accident, and John Jones is stripped of his title. He is then indefinitely suspended by the UFC. Daniel Cormier slides right in there. And Daniel Cormier fights Anthony Johnson for the vacant title. And then Daniel Cormier walks out of UFC 187 as a new light heavyweight champion. After that, John Jones comes back after a year layoff. And Jones is scheduled to fight Cormier again at UFC 197. If you remember this, this was last year. And this time, Cormier is forced to pull out with an injury. Cormier pulls out. This slides Ovin St. Prue in there to fight John Jones for the interim light heavyweight title now. And John Jones, while some may have called it the worst performance of his career, just cruised through that fight, dominated Ovin St. Prue in every aspect of the game, and walked out as a new interim light heavyweight title holder. UFC 200, they are scheduled to fight once again Cormier and Jones, and this time Jones tests positive for banned substances, and he is pulled from the card just three days before the fight. This was a devastating news for Cormier. I'm sure many of you guys saw his reaction after um, he heard the news. But then this slides Anderson Silva in there, who we'll get to later. Anderson Silva gets in there on just two days notice. He fights Daniel Cormier, loses the fight by unanimous decision. And John Jones is suspended for a year, which is retroactive back to UFC 200's date, which was July 7th. John Jones is suspended for a year, and after a year, in 2017, he comes back uh, at UFC 214. He fights Daniel Cormier once again, and this time the fight actually does go down, and uh, John Jones walks out as a new light heavyweight title holder after uh, defeating Daniel Cormier via a head kick KO. Uh, this was very recent. I'm sure many of you guys remember the fight. Um, so John Jones becomes a new champion. Daniel Cormier is devastated. And we really thought everything was settled here with Jones until we heard the news that John Jones tested positive once again, this time for uh, an anabolic steroid called Turinabol. And Jones tests positive. He is stripped of the title once again and for the third time in his career. And that makes Daniel Cormier the undisputed champion once again. So here we are on November 15th. Um, John Jones is still out of action. And we are really wondering about what's going to happen to him next. So that was John Jones' storyline. Let's go down to Anderson Silva and his timeline. Anderson Silva, it really started to all go wrong for him on his Chris Weidman fight, the first one, where he gets knocked out during the fight while clowning. Anderson Silva was clowning Chris Weidman all fight. He gets caught, and then he gets knocked out, loses the title, and it snaps the longest um, winning streak in the history of the UFC. And then they have a rematch. Wadman and Silva are scheduled for a rematch. And this time, Anderson Silva loses the fight after breaking his leg in the middle of the fight. I'm sure many of you saw the injury. It was gruesome. Um, his leg literally snapped in half. It was a very, very tough, tough one to see, especially to a legend like Silva. So after many uh, speculations and people telling him to stop fighting, Anderson Silva returns. Silva returns, and he this time fights Nick Diaz at UFC 183. He fights Nick Diaz. He wins the fight by unanimous decision. But only a few days after the fight, Anderson Silva tests for two anabolic steroids. And he is now suspended from action. And the fight is turned to no contest. Um, and re everybody really thought that Anderson Silva's career could be over. But Anderson Silva returns once again, this time in 2016. And he fights Michael Bisping 
uh, a fight which was very, very controversial in many ways. Um, many thought that Silva won, but he lost the fight via unanimous decision. And then after that, he steps in against uh, Daniel Cormier at UFC 200 and replaces uh, John Jones. This, like I said before, John Jones tested positive for banned substances, and then this slides Anderson Silva in there to fight Daniel Cormier for the title. And then Daniel Cormier loses the fight by unanimous decision once again, which then brings Anderson Silva to UFC 208. He fights Derek Brunson at UFC 208, which was February of this year. So it was earlier this year. He fights Brunson. He gets back on the winning track, and he defeats Derek Brunson by unanimous decision or a split decision. Um, so then he's scheduled to fight Kelvin Gastelum after that at UFC 212. That was supposed to be in, in, in Brazil. Um, but Kelvin Gastelum tests positive for marijuana. He's pulled from the card. And that leaves Silva out of action for a few months until they're scheduled to fight again, which uh, was supposed to be on the Shanghai card coming up uh, late November, uh, November 25th. This time Silva is pulled from the card after testing positive for steroids once again. And this happened very recently. It was a devastating news to hear. And now we're just waiting to see what's going to happen to Silva. Um, so that's as far as timelines go. That's the timelines for both fighters. I laid it out there. Now it's time to start making some comparisons and some similarities. Um, because there are a lot. So many questions to be answered. But what the biggest thing... The biggest thing now at this point is both of these legendary careers are at question now. They both went down the same path with steroids. They both tested positive multiple times. And now at one point their careers were thought to be the two of the best careers in the history of the UFC. And now it's two of the most possible screw ups. It's, it's just devastating to hear. But now they're put in question. We don't know at this point if John Jones or Anderson Silva was clear. We don't know if they were clean back when they were fighting in their prime. When Anderson Silva was knocking out Vitor Belfort with that front kick, when he was just clowning Stefan Bonner, we don't know if he was clean then. We don't know if John Jones was clean when he fought Daniel Cormier the first time at UFC 182. A lot of questions now. Now there's so many things that people can speculate, but the biggest thing that is is were they clean when they were in their prime? And after watching Silva pull out of the fight or get pulled from the fight rather my answer is no I don't think he was clean and I think Michael Bisping had a very very interesting view on this um, Michael Bisping basically said that you know as somebody who's been fighting forever you don't just start taking steroids at age 40 uh, you just don't do that and Michael Bisping suspects and believes um, very firmly that Silva has been doing this for a very very long time and you know, honestly, I couldn't agree with Michael Bisping more. I, I do believe Silva has been um, juiced for a long time. And as sad as it may sound, I really don't think that he deserves being that greatest of all time conversation. You know, his achievements are great. Everything about him was just spectacular, amazing. But once you have these kind of incidents, not once, but twice, it really does put everything into question. And... Now, their futures are basically ruined, in my opinion. Um, I mean, it just taints their legacy so much. Um, and it, it really is a sad situation. But, you know, I mean, they really drove themselves into the situation. So, a few questions that we can ask here. Are their legacies still intact? I think I answered that. I believe no, it is really not. It can't be at this point. Um, even in other sports like baseball, when players use steroids, you know, they're just, they won't be respected. Their stats won't be respected no matter how good they were. Um, Barry Bonds is a perfect example. Mark McGuire. Um, I mean, these guys just, they use steroids and they're, they will never be as respected as people, you know, like Hank Aaron or Babe Ruth or any of these other legends. Um, so to, to, to that question, are their legacies still intact? My answer is a firm no. Are they still in the greatest of all time conversation? I think I answered that as well. I don't think so. Um, especially with the return of GSP, I think that really settled that argument. 
I think George St. Pierre is officially the greatest of all time. Um, I actually wrote an article on this at MMALatestNews.com. Um, I mean, George St. Pierre, there, there is not a single quality about George St. Pierre that makes it, that makes him not the greatest of all time. I mean, he's just, he's basically done everything right in order to earn that title and position. And I think George St. Pierre, especially after UFC 217, you know, deserves to be called the greatest of all time. Um, I believe Mighty Mouse was up there with him, but when GSP won that second title and beat Michael Bisping, I think uh, it really did put him out of reach of everybody else. Um, and it will be tough for anybody to catch up in any time soon, uh, especially as long as George St. Pierre's uh, keep fighting. So, um, But that's besides the topic. Would they ever be able to fight again? Um, I think this is a, an interesting question to answer. Anderson Silva? I believe no. Um, Silva's really, really, you know, he's old now. Uh, I don't think Silva is... Silva's been going straight downhill ever since that Chris Wyman fight. His performances just haven't lived up to um, what is expected of him. Anderson Silva, I, I do not think he's going to be able to fight again. Um, especially he gets multiple years of suspension. Um, there's, I just don't see how he can be competitive after uh, taking a few years off um, at his age. So, as far as Silva's concerned, I don't believe that he'll be able to fight again. John Jones, depending on the length of his suspension, I do believe he will be able to fight again. Um, will he be as good as he was when he was, you know, 28, 27, or even 30? Uh, as good as he looked in UFC 214? I don't think so. Um taking that many years off does something but if anybody can do it John Jones is one of the very few fighters that can come back after such a long layoff and still have competitive fights not gonna say he's gonna be as dominant I'm not gonna say that he's going to be able to win the title again but uh, I do believe he can bring some competitiveness to the division just because of the talent he is um, but I mean, there's so many things that are ruined now because of this these incidents. And one of the things is public reception. I mean, you see guys like Colby Covington just trashing John Jones on Twitter. Um, I mean, I'm, I guarantee you they have lost so many fans, so many support, so much support, so many supporters. Uh, I just don't see how they can come back and have the same public reception, how they can be respected the same way they used to be. So, it's... Um, it's really a tough situation for them and for the fans because now the two fighters who used to be considered the greatest of all time are basically out of that conversation. And not only are they out of that uh, conversation, they drove themselves out of that conversation. So um, it really it really does suck to see that. But you know, I think what we really do need to figure out is how do we stop this? How do we stop this from continuously happening? Because even after the implementation of USADA, uh, United States Anti-Doping Agency, these things have continued to occur. I mean, we continue to see people getting popped. We just saw it with Noguera. We just saw it with, again, with um, with uh, Josh Barnett. We saw it with, we, we've been seeing it with so many fighters even after USADA was implemented. So how do we stop the steroid users? I think the punishments and the consequences must be more strict. For example, I think once a fighter tests positive for something, then I think their um, their legacy is forever tainted, and I don't think they should be allowed to, let's say, get in the get in the Hall of Fame. You know, I mean, let's look at the most recent um, fighter who entered it, besides Sakuraba, Uriah Faber. Uriah Faber, he was never caught once. He was never in the conversation of being caught. Uriah Faber was clean his whole career, um, and that's why he's one of the most respected fighters, because he's been fighting forever, even through the steroid era, um, but Uriah Faber managed to stay clean, so guys like that can enter Hall of Fame, but once you got, you got guys who use steroids to enhance their performance, getting into Hall of Fame, I think it kind of really um, gets rid of the purpose of Hall of Fame. Because it's just there's just no way that that's fair for people who didn't use steroids. So that's just an example of 
harsher consequences. I think it's very necessary if we really want to stop this from happening over and over. Um, because I think we've seen it by, uh, by now that USADA is just not enough to stop this. Uh, USADA is simply not going to cut it for, for these fighters to, you know, stop using steroids. So I think definitely UFC needs to really get on this, um, because the consequences in the sport of MMA is so much more severe than any other sport. Um, you look at a sport like baseball, I mean... The, the reason that the consequences are a lot more severe is in the fact that the damage, there's a direct damage to to a person in, in MMA. There's nothing like that in baseball. There's nothing like that in soccer. There's nothing like that in football. Well, I mean, in football, you know, I, I guess, but they're not intentionally trying to hurt people. Um, MMA, you are. So there's, you know, direct damage being done on purpose by somebody onto another human being. So if you really enhance your performance, um, it, it really kind of raises the uh, level of risk of causing harsh damage. And it really does put a lot of fighters' life at risk. So I think um, it really is important to stop this from happening. Um, like I said, USADA is simply not enough. As much as it has helped out, USADA is just not enough to stop, them, stop the fighters from doing it. So I think harsher consequences are... Are definitely necessary um, maybe that's a conversation for another time but that's basically what I wanted to talk about today Andrew Silva and John Jones both their careers and how it went down um, it really went down the similar path it really did go down a similar path and uh, um, like I said it really does suck to see that because they are legends in the sport um, but you know ultimately you got to do what's fair for the business and what's fair for business is that these fighters really face consequences and they, you know, really kind of suffer from their actions. So that's my point today is that harsher consequences are necessary here. It's really necessary um, because if fighters use steroids, there's just no point in fighting especially when you're fighting guys who are juiced up all the time. It's just it's just not a fair fight. So let's hope that some changes could be made in the future um, for the sake of the sport, for the sake of the fighters, for the sake of the company, UFC, or Bellator. Um, let's hope that some actions could be taken uh, on steroids and really restrict that from the sport and drive it out of the sport. 